What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Pace Studios here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. On a very cold day, we have a great band uh, with us today. This is Tracy Bonham and company. And Guys, company. thank you so much for coming and playing at Pace for us today. Uh, so Tracy, you've got uh, a new record out. It came out a couple months ago. It's yeah. called Modern Burdens. It's a really interesting record because it is a sen- it's like a re-recording with all new uh, versions of the songs that were on your debut record, uh, The Burdens of Being Upright, which came out in 96. Mm-hmm. So that's like a crazy project. But it's all these songs are totally different, totally new feel. And uh, it's an amazing sounding record. You're going to do a couple of songs from that today for mm-hmm. us, I think. Okay. Um, plus one other older one. Um, let's start off with a song. Uh, tell me a little bit about this first one. Okay, the first song is from my album that was released in 2010. Mm-hmm. The album is called Massa Manhattan. So this is a song called Devil's Got Your Boyfriend. And uh, if you like podcasts right now, it's um, a part of the Dirty John podcast. Cool. Uh, so uh, you may recognize it. Okay. You guys ready for this? Yeah, okay.
Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that really sounds great. Is this the format uh, that you have been performing with for for how long? You know, with clarinets and trombones and... <laughs> I know you've been a violin Shall player be going back to the beginning. <laughs> right. Um, I, right. You know, like there are a lot of people, myself included, who, uh, you know, associate with a certain kind of rock, alternative, grungy kind of sound. Is, is this what you have been doing for uh, a while? Well, I, I think I, um, I can't commit to any one thing, yeah. uh, one sound, one uh, approach, one style. So this is, yes, what I'm doing here today, right now, and I would love to do this every day for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, I do have an admission to make that these are the, this is the first time that we've played for real together. So these lovely horn players are just showing up. All the more impressive. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a configuration that I've had before. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it just depends on the gig and the stage. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this stage is sort of conducive to clarinets. Of does, course. Does this room just say clarinet? Clarinet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah. I was, I've been thinking that, but you know, it's a little <laughs> subtle. Um, and so, like, you know, that sort of leads me to uh, the record that you just put out, um, which is it's called Modern Burdens, and you basically re recorded, but that's not the right word. You re envisioned, really, mm -hmm. all of the, all the songs on your, from mm -hmm. your debut record. Correct. Um, and was that in part due to, like, that sort of itch of trying to make new sounds, be different, put, like, sim put ideas that are familiar into new contexts, that kind of thing? Absolutely. That's the spirit of it. Uh, John here produced the album. Uh, Hi, John. So <clears throat> when we, you know, I had been getting some pressure to do some re records anyway of the, the album from the 90s, and a lot of bands do that mainly because the record label might own your masters, and so you can, you know, actually have a, you know, be able to make money if you make a re record. Right. So that was the idea, and we were going to do that, but then we started talking. We're like, why? This is so boring. Like, why? We've already done it. Um, so, you know, you were really the cheerleader on this. Like, let's just bust it wide open, do something completely different, and make something that sounds good today. And then, then it just went from there. Then we got the guest performers, and then it just took on a whole other. Yeah, life. and there's some amazing guest performers on here. Uh, Tanya Donnelly from Belly, uh, Nicole Atkins. I saw is on at least one song. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Yamagata. It's it's really kind of a, a crazy guest list. Um, so did you have like an idea when you finally when you decided like we're doing this? <coughs> how did these songs like? Did you did you? Were these things that had been in your mind for a while? Like, I've always thought this, you know, mm. Navy Bean could kind of sound like this. Yeah, oh. Navy Bean for sure, I would say, it was a yeah. song that was already leaning towards <coughs> that. You know, the, yeah. the original version is like a gun shot, like it's like a machine gun fast kind of thing. I really wanted to slink it up. I feel like um, these songs needed to loosen up. Uh, they were very much trapped in the 90s alternative, you know, Nirvana yeah. kind of style. Right. And they right. needed to, you know, I needed to see if they could actually stand up to the test of time. Were you sure that they could? No, I wasn't sure at all. And then songs like, there's a song called um, Kisses, no, 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 actually Brain Crack that we won't do today, but that changed from a little ditty of me just playing pizzicato on the violin just because I wanted people to know I played the violin yeah. to an actual full-on song. And that happened organically with the singer, Catherine Calder from the New Pornographers, yep. she and John just really shaped that song and made it an actual, like, beautiful, ambient, vibey song. Yeah, that's cool. And so, like, as you went through this, were there any <coughs> songs that you hit any kind of uh, a wall and you're like, I don't know if this is going to work? Yeah. Interesting. The song we'll do next called Kisses. Um, how can I say this? Um, we almost had to... To, to scrap it and try it again. Uh, we had Rachel Yamagata come uh, to my studio in Woodstock, and she did great, but the, the track that she sang to was just a piece of crap. <laughs> it, was a, it was a microphone issue more oh, so right, than anything okay. else. So we yeah. kept trying to replace the music around her, yeah. but we didn't record to a click. Yeah. So it was like, so it was just us kind of feeling it out as she's singing and kind of playing to it. Right, so it was right. super right. loose. Yeah. But then we had to re thing. Yeah, and we had to replace the, the bed underneath her, the, the yeah. music underneath her. And that for a while there we were like, I don't know yeah. how it's gonna happen. And then one day we were in your, you know, apartment in Bushwick and we just I think again that spirit came over us of like anything goes. Yeah. And the one thing I I do wanna say that I loved about this project is that I wasn't precious because these songs already exist. So I didn't have to worry, and I knew, you know, the album did well in the 90s, so again, there's less pressure, and I have to say that was a joy. I don't think I've ever had that kind of liberation to just 
to just try anything because yeah. it's okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So uh, the next song, as you say, is Kisses. Uh, the next song actually is not Kisses. It's not? No. Let no, me, sorry. Let me, let me rewind <laughs> and start again. The next song is? It's called, um, let me think about it. I forgot the name of it. Oh, it starts with an M. <clears throat> and my, oh, right. So nice you say it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, so new slash old. New slash old. This is Mother Mother All Grown Up. Right. Okay. New lyrics. New lyrics too in the second verse. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I remember that song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it is a little bit different. You're not old enough. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm, I'm old <laughs> enough. Um, I, I just look incredibly young. Yes, you um, do. So <laughs> that song is definitely different, not just musically, but there are some, there are some little twists of lyrics here and there. Um, was that also something that was part of the project here? I mean, mm. you know, I didn't go through, like, lyrically... I listened to every song. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to pick out like the little subtle differences in words, but in that one, mm -hmm. they are pretty explicit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, you know that was a song that came out in '96 and had a kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to say I don't know I don't want to put a feminist tag on anything, it's but okay. 
But uh, decades, two decades later, mm -hmm. it's like, were you thinking we have not moved the needle or yeah. the needle has moved but not where we want it to be? I mean, what was behind the that well, song? Doing that's, it again? you know, well put. Um, <clears throat> I think when we were embarking on this project, it was just before the elections. So the campaign was getting, you know, it was ugly, ugly and it was fascinating. And we were, you know, watching... Uh, sometimes in awe, most times like, that'll never happen, don't worry. And when it got a little bit, you know, scary, um, I started to think, you know, also at the same time I was thinking, how am I going to make these songs relevant? Because they're all about a past relationship and a boyfriend who was a total misogynist and very destructive um, relationship, a man who had a lot of self-loathing and he, you know, he was just a terrible, terrible person to be in a relationship with. And I thought, oh, I can, I'll never find the relevance. And then, of course, I, all I had to do was, you know, copy yeah, and paste sort of another found you. face. Exactly. On So that was kind of a gift for me because I could then put new energy uh, behind these old lyrics. Um, and then when we started to, well, then when um, he, Trump was elected, we thought it was even more important to make this a statement album. And yeah. so that's when we started inviting the girls to join us as a, as a statement and a message of strength and solidarity. Um, and I love the whole process of it. It was so, so magical because 20 years ago, I might have actually been a little competitive with some of these women because we were all pitted against each other in the music business. Yeah. And we were all told, I know every single one of these women has a, have a story about how they were told, like, oh, we already have a Alanis Morissette or oh, we, ha we already have a Tanya Donnelly or we already have this. So we were all kind of competing against each other. But 20 years later, the silver lining of all of this stuff is that I got to have, like, collaborations with these women and start or rekindle friendships. Yeah. So there's that. There's the community aspect of it. And then inspiring re inspiring young women to speak up. Um, a lot of these songs are, uh, you know, about mild sexual abuse and things. So I, th I just think the timing is kind of weird um, and serendipitous, but uh, very important to kind of bolster and each other and, and help each other, um, you know, spread the, the message of love and strength and not, you know... Um, Biting your tongue, swallowing your words. Right. Yeah. Do you feel like you know we're we're two decades down the road now? As you look at the songs as they were and as they are now, that you know, is there a is there a continuum that you can see? Is it is it better now mm -hmm. for the <laughs> ladies in in the industry that that you can see? You know, mm -hmm. the ones who are doing what you were doing mm -hmm. in '96, mm -hmm. they're making their debut albums. Right. Have we made the progress the the 1996 you <laughs> would have liked to see? Yes and no. I think it's um, the pendulum swung so far back about, I think, 90, 98, 99, 2000, uh, that women in rock was like a mysterious thing that happened in the past. Then it came back. I think Lord kind of busted through and she had that um, hit Royals and then alternative rock chicks were back. And um, then the conversation was about women in rock again. And there was a New York Times article that I read where Sadie Dupuis, one of the mm -hmm. one of my friends and guest artists on the album, she talked about what it was like to you know walk into a club and the guy would ask if she was the dancer or something. It hasn't changed. So I have to say, like yes, in some ways it has. I think the music business in general, there's more freedom for anyone in all types of music and you know that kind of indie spirit. You can basically you know make the decisions for yourself and all that. That's great. We don't have record labels telling us to wear certain things or whatever. That's awesome, but there again, um, there's so many things that are not right and yeah. haven't come that far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we're gonna do, uh, you're gonna do one more for us. This is another one off of uh, Modern Burdens. Yes, this one's uh, called Kisses. Called Kisses. Yeah. This one is called Kisses. <laughs> yeah. This one features Rachel Yamagata on the album and she, as I said, she did a beautiful job. She'll suck the living down to size three She'll suck the living and she'll kill me Necks are crooked and it's time to sing 
Her beak's wide open at the sound of wings. Oh, I. Oh, oh, I. Oh, oh, I. Oh, oh, I. She kisses harder than me. She kisses harder than me. Guess I'm not that hungry. Her veins are rivers flowing to the sea. Fish will eat it, but don't ask me. Angels look and make it hard to cry. People look and make it cool to die. Oh, I. Kisses harder than me. I guess I'm not that hungry. She kisses harder than me. She kisses harder than me. I guess I'm not that hungry. Thank you so much. Uh, everyone, this of course is Tracy Bonham. Uh, thank you for coming to Paste and playing in our studio for us today. Uh, Tracy's new album is called Modern Burdens. Um, came out in October. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is music to be found and tour dates and videos and all that good stuff on TracyBonham.com. I think there's some New York dates coming up. Correct, yeah. Um, at least one 11th? at Rockwood Music Hall in yeah. February, I February know. February 23rd, Rockwood, Rockwood um, Music Hall Stage 3. Yeah. January 11th at the Flatiron Building. It's um, You'd have to find out my website right now. It's a benefit. Okay. Um, a show can in upstate New York, um, the Winter Hoot on February 3rd. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so all those dates, again, are on TracyBonham.com, and uh, definitely pick up Modern Burdens, which is a really special album. Uh, so again, thank you so much for coming to Paste and playing for us in our studio today. Thank you. And please come back and play for us again anytime. Okay. All right. <laughs>